All right, well, welcome to this uh, review for your Unit 3 test um, in macroeconomics. Um, I took a couple of questions from the 2015 and 2014 AP macroeconomics test. Um, actually removed, as you can see, I removed a couple of parts um, from the question so that it was just the stuff that um, we covered in Unit 3. Um, but you'll notice that uh, both these questions have a lot of similarities. Um, it was both on the 2014 and the 2015 test, and if you go back and look at a number of other years too, it's pretty common to see problems of, of this sort uh, on the AP test. Um, and of course it'll be on your Unit 3 test. Something along these lines will be on that test. So, with no further ado, um, let's do this problem. Number one, uh, assume the United States economy is operating uh, key there is below full employment. Draw a correctly labeled graph of long run aggregate supply, short run aggregate supply, and aggregate demand. And then show each of the following. So let's do part 1A there. Oops. Go back to the pen. 1A. Uh, I gotta draw a graph. Always make sure we label everything. So price level and uh, GDP or real GDP or national income there. Um, we've got to draw in our aggregate demand curve. We draw in our short run aggregate supply. And now this is how I would normally start. In fact, I might even draw in my little equilibrium amounts there. That's at uh, price level one and I think I was supposed to label this as Y1. Um, and now, because we're operating at below full employment, I want this equilibrium point that I've got right here um, to be at less than the full employment and less than the long run aggregate supply. So I'm going to draw my long run aggregate supply to the right of my equilibrium, which shows that I'm in a little bit of a recession there, that I've got a recessionary gap. Um, and then it also said I think part B said to label this as the Y for full employment because that's where if I was at full employment um, I would be producing at the uh, long run aggregate supply curve there. So I think I covered actually um, covered parts 1 and 2 there so on to uh, part B. Assume that the marginal propensity to consume is 0.8 and the value of the recessionary gap is $300 billion. Um, if the government changes its spending without changing taxes to eliminate the gap, uh, calculate the minimum required change in government spending. So I've got a $300 billion gap that I've got to close. And I've got to increase my spending by a certain amount I'll just label that amount, I don't know, X. And I know that I've got a autonomous spending, or government spending, multiplier um, that for every dollar I spend here, some of that turns into that turns into some more consumption, which turns into more income, which turns into more consumption, etc. And that multiplier, if you remember, is 1 over 1 minus the MPC. Well, in our case, the MPC was given to us I'm going to actually erase this little MPC there and I'm going to put in the 0.8. That was what it was, right? Yeah. Marginal propensity to consume is 0.8. And so how much would be the what I need to spend? Well, all I'm doing now is solving for X. Um, this ends up being 300 equals X times uh, 1 over 0.2 which is 5, if you plug it into your calculator, divide both sides by 5, and I get x equals 60 billion. That would be the minimum amount that I would have to increase spending to get that 300, um, that 300 million. That would be assuming, of course, that the multiplier uh, was 
you know there wasn't any imports or any taxes that were hurting the um, multiplier effect um, and of course they didn't say that so I'm gonna assume that would work out uh, part two then that was B1 part two says if the government decides to change taxes without uh, changing government spending to eliminate the recessionary gap will the minimum required change in the tax be greater than smaller than or equal to the minimum required change in government spending in part D explain um, I wouldn't actually need to solve it but I, I could solve what would be the minimum amount um, and the main difference here is that the spending multiplier is bigger than the tax multiplier spending multiplier um, spending multiplier is 1 over 1 minus 0 0.8 which equals 5 the tax multiplier sorry my handwriting's awful but the tax multiplier is smaller the tax multiplier is the MPC over 1 minus the MPC or in other words it's 0.8 over 1 minus 0.8 which equals 0.8 over 0.2 which equals 4 because the tax multiplier is smaller than the spending multiplier the tax uh, cut to get the same effect would have to be greater so something to that effect I would write tax cut needs to be greater because tax multiplier is smaller. Ugh, I ran out of space down there. But you get the idea. Tax cuts need to be greater than spending multiplier or spending increases because the tax multiplier is smaller you could go ahead and explain that the tax multiplier is 4 instead of 5 and that would uh, definitely help your answer uh, last part assume the government lowers income tax rates to eliminate the recessionary gap uh, which of the following will increase decrease or which will each of the following increase decrease or stay the same um, so let's see this is part C1 uh, aggregate demand will increase if you cut taxes people will have more money uh, consumption will increase so why does the aggregate demand increase because what I just said consumption will go up as people have more disposable income um, the long run aggregate supply curve um, will not change. Nothing has changed. Um, the tax rates doesn't doesn't increase the amount that we could possibly produce. Uh, the tax tax change didn't affect our ability to produce. Um, it didn't. It didn't increase our ability to produce. It didn't change anything there. Um, how much we can produce is still how much we can produce. So I would say not change. Um, tax cut doesn't um, affect ability to produce. Oh, I can't do it over two paper pieces of paper there. Would you look at that? Ability to produce doesn't affect the ability So the long run aggregate supply curve would not move um, All right, let's go to the 2014 question. Uh, it's actually very similar assume the United States is operating again below the full employment level and again it's gonna say the same thing notice this is exactly the same as that other question um, like I said the, pro the probability of you getting a question like this where you might have to draw that graph is pretty high 
So I would do the same thing that I did last time. Price level, GDP or income, draw on my aggregate demand, draw on my short run aggregate supply, um, draw on my equilibrium price level, my equilibrium uh, output, and because we are below full employment, this is my full employment at my long run aggregate supply. Beautiful. So there's A. B. Um, the United States government increases spending on goods and services by a hundred billion dollars, which is financed by borrowing. How will the increase in government spending affect each of the following? Well, the idea is that cyclical unemployment will uh, decrease. The idea behind the spending is that we'll get the economy going, the business cycle will um, improve, we'll go into an expansionary time, and so cyclical unemployment will decrease. The natural rate of unemployment is the thing that does not change. The natural unemployment level is that structural and uh, cyclical, or sorry, structural and frictional unemployment that kind of always exists in an economy, um, and so that doesn't change. That's going to stay the same. Um, actually, it doesn't tell us to explain why, so I will leave my answer as just those short words. Um, if the marginal propensity to consume is equal to 0.75, calculate the maximum possible change in GDP that could result from the $100 billion increase. Well, that's the same problem that we had before. We would take the $100 billion times our multiplier, which is 1 over 1 minus our MPC, which is 0.75. Um, if I punch that into a calculator, although you won't be allowed a calculator on an AP test, so maybe a, I'll say this is 1 over 0.25. 1 divided by 1 fourth is the same as 1 over, times 4 over 1. I don't care how you come up with your answer, but the multiplier is 4. And we get 400 billion. There you go. There's your answer. I hope this helps as you uh, study for your test. Uh, not just now, but perhaps in the spring. Um, sorry that my handwriting is really sloppy, but enjoy and good luck tomorrow.